I am a murderer. I'm completely serious. I'm a member of a genocidal and adulterous civilization in freefall and a, a citizen of a country that is leading other countries around the world into genocide, genocide. And I have failed, failed utterly to defend my preborn neighbor. That's the truth. I failed. And instead, instead of defending my neighbor, I've become a collaborator. And I've been my whole life a collaborator. And I'm born into it. Abortion was legalized six years before I was born. In all 50 states by Roe versus Wade. And I inherited, I inherited a collaboration in genocide. Now, I've just come back from Africa. Um, I live part of the year, every year, in Africa, by the grace of God. And then we marched uh, against the legalization of abortion in Nairobi just a few days ago, one week ago, yesterday. It was a wonderful march. And three days ago, less than three days ago, the Kenyan Supreme Court determined that uh, sodomy, in a high court ruling, sodomy, they upheld the law criminalizing sodomy. Now, the Trump administration, don't take my word for it, you can look at projectc.com and see that the Trump administration, uh, click on links, you'll find a news article saying that the Trump administration is globally and actively working uh, to decriminalize, to pressure every country in the world that has ongoing prosecution of the felony act of sodomy, which was a felony under English common law for many hundreds of years, okay? And which since the, uh, the apostles brought Christianity into the Western world and the Greco-Roman world has been uh, a felony, a very serious crime. And the Trump administration is working to erase the vestiges of that law that still exist in some nations, some nations that seriously do prosecute sodomy. Kenya would be one of them. Uganda would be one of them. Most of the African countries would be some of them. This, in and of itself, is genocidal. We need to confess, as Americans, as American Christians, our collaboration with this genocide makes us all murderers. Murderers who have so utterly failed to restrain our own centralized federal government that our foreign policy has ensured that it's not just limited to our own families and our own cities and states, but our taxpayer money and our federal government has been not only um, attacking other countries, but also the in our foreign policy and in the money that we spend and give or withhold from foreign governments, we've become though the instrument that Satan is using to cajole countries all around the world into the genocide of legalizing sodomy. The genocide of legalizing sodomy. And the Trump administration is up to its eyeballs in actively seeking to legalize, to force other nations, other peoples, innocent peoples, who have good laws still on the book, they don't have any Lawrence versus Texas, and actively seeking to, to cajole innocent peoples around the world to legalize the abomination that God said in Leviticus 18 caused the land to vomit out the Canaanites. And warned the Israelites that if they legalized it, namely sodomy, the land would likewise vomit them out. So these abominations of human sacrifice, child sacrifice, specifically also mentioned in Leviticus 18, and legalized sodomy 
having come back from Africa just a few days ago, it's fresh on my mind how vile it is. You know, it's one thing to watch someone who's long ago corrupted themselves the way Western civilization has, uh, continuing to indulge in their, in their desecrations and corruptions. But when you see virgin countries, yes, they have their problems, but countries that still have laws against these wicked abominations, now being cajoled by the Trump administration and by every administration, every successive administration, Republican or Democrat, to legalize these abominations that cause the land, set the living God, to vomit out the inhabitants thereof. It is sobering. It is like watching a prostitute or a pimp pimp out not the old prostitute, experienced prostitute, but a young 13 or 14 year old virgin girl for the first time. It's painful. It's hideous. It's satanic. It's disgusting. It's evil. It's abominable. And we're setting ourselves up to deserve utter and total destruction. And I need to apologize, I realized, to AHA, Abolish Human Abortion Organization, if it is an organization, uh, T. Russell Hunter, uh, Matthew Truella of Mercy Seat Christian Church, uh, Rusty Thomas, and all, and all the leadership of that, uh, those groups, because I've failed to communicate with you clearly. I was sitting in jail in Nairobi for a couple of days, and spent a couple more weeks trying to recover my passport. I was not charged with anything. Many of you know this, um, but the FBI was strong-armed, the Kenya police, to uh, give me you know, quite a little hassle for a couple of weeks. And I was stuck in Kenya, couldn't leave Kenya, and sat in, you know, slept on the floor in an African jail for a couple of nights. But the Lord blessed me with um, people who came uh, unexpectedly from different corners of the earth who spoke up for me and defended me. If any of you are listening right now and you're some of those people, you know who you are, people from New Zealand, people from the United States, people I'd never met before in my life, called the police, called uh, the embassy, the United States embassy, and spoke up for me. Before it was over, because of the, the mercies of God and the intervention of these people, because I had done nothing wrong and was not even alleged to have committed any crime, uh, I, the Kenya police welcomed me to Kenya, the immigration welcomed me, and they formally apologized to me at the Jomo Kenyatta in International Airport. But before that happened, when I was still very much uh, in jeopardy, uh, the group that, that helped me was encouraged by people who identify themselves as AHA, Abolish Human Abortion Members, to abandon me, to dissociate from me. And so they tried, whoever they are, these people, and I have it on good, from good, reliable sources that they did this, tried very hard to discourage the people the Lord sent to help me in my hour of need from helping me. And I left a voicemail for Matt Truella, who no longer uh, speaks with me, um, a very angry one after I got out of jail, letting him know, you know, you need to think about the people that you're associating with. Um, and I've thought about that in the weeks since. I've calmed down a little bit. The Lord defended me. Those people were not successful in uh, r removing and separating the angels the Lord sent to help from me and from helping me. And I praise the Lord for that. So I've calmed down a little bit and I've realized it's, I'm the one who needs to apologize to Matt Truella, again to Rusty Thomas, to T. Russell Hunter, and the leadership of Abolish Human Abortion because I have failed to effectively communicate with you. Yesterday, I, uh, Rob Rudnick and I uh, reviewed an article by Fred Clark. By the way, I may have mistakenly uh, conflated uh, Fred Clark with Frederick Clarkson of Political Research Associates in Maryland. Uh, I guess they're not, uh, I'm still not completely sure, but I guess they're not the same uh, person. Just two people writing about a similar subject from a similar perspective with similar names. But I guess I was wrong about that. 
I'll put a note on that video to um, observe that mistake and admit it. I'm pretty sure I was I was wrong. Um, anyway, regardless of that, I uh, read the article by Fred Clark in um, Patheos blog along with Rob Rudnick, and we uh, the, the central argument. It was titled, uh, you know, an army of rest Kolnikovs. You can see the video. It's the previous one uploaded to this video. Uh, if you want to, and we just laughed and kind of shock jock joked about the uh, the article, but the substantial point that this pro-abortion evangelical uh, Fred Clark made in the Patheos blog was that the it's clear to anyone from the outside that the pro-life movement, and also I would include he didn't name them specifically, but I would include abolish human abortion leadership, does not believe their own rhetoric. And he made a very uh, cogent point about that. And it's very well taken. But as I was praying and looking at my Bible today, I realized that there's a lot of pride and I have failed to communicate. And that's why I began this video by saying I'm a murderer. That's not rhetoric. I am a collaborator. I've failed to defend the innocent preborn children, and I'm a collaborator in their murder. And so, Matt Truella, if you're listening, T. Russell Hunter, if you're listening, uh, Rusty Thomas, if you're listening, I'm trying to lead you so-called leaders out of the failure that you're mired in. This is the reason why Matt Truella, uh, in his preaching at Mercy Seat Christian Church, has excised, has cut out Romans chapter 7 from effectively from the Bible. He's leaving it in the Bible, but he's, he's effectively emasculated that scripture through his teaching by saying that the Romans 7 condition, where Paul says, I have my friend's Bible here, um, verse 14 of Romans 7, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Verse 17. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would do, not. Excuse me. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. If I, I find, verse 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind... I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. May the Lord bless the reading of his word from Romans chapter 7. Now, why am I bringing this up in this context? I began this video by confessing, and I'm totally serious, okay? I am a murderer. Okay, not only did I read the uh, Frederick or Fred Clark, there I go again, Fred Clark article, yesterday, which we discussed and read in almost its entirety in the previous video, along with Rob Rudnick. But I also took time and I listened to a um, abolitionist radio from the Northern Idaho chapter of Abolish Human Abortion. They haven't updated a program on their website. I'll give the link in the description of this video. In, in, in over two years, they haven't um, uploaded a program. I don't know if they're still an active chapter or not. I assume they are because their website is still up. But I had never listened to their uh, radio interview or their radio program where they addressed the issue 
of Paul Hill and the, the few individuals who have uh, forcibly attacked abortion providers and defended uh, the babies from abortion. And I listened to most of it. I couldn't quite bring myself to finish it. It was so contorted, so miserable. I'll link to it in the description here. The ethical and rhetorical pretzels that these little nasally voiced young men, sorry to disparage you, uh, but the, 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 they twist themselves into to uh, just do contortions, okay, to avoid what a six-year-old child can easily see is the truth. And I thought about just mocking them, because it would be very easy to do. I thought about even playing their the MP3 of their program here and just point by point mocking them, but, it, but it's, and just criticizing their, their arguments really don't, you know, I mean, basically they say that the lesser magistrate is the one they're echoing just what T. Russell Hunter says in abolishhumanabortion.com or abolishhumanabortion.org, which is that the lesser magistrate is the one authorized to use the Romans 13 sword, and therefore we can't, uh, it's evil for us to usurp it, and people would misunderstand and misconstrue what we would do. Um, it, it, it's all a lot of, you know, patently a lot of rot. Anyone from the outside can see these are people who are, who are just uh, torturing themselves with strange and inconsistent, uh, you know, ethical um, absurdities to avoid what a, a child can see, which is that the innocent children being slaughtered by abortion deserve to be protected, and we have failed to protect them. Now, how do I tie all this together? Okay, okay, I, I'll talk about their argument just a little bit more, because their argument makes no sense, and they they don't, uh, and they know it, and you can hear it in the in the in the in their trembling voices as they even talk about the subject, but I'll give it to them. At least they talk about it. They tried to talk about it. Again, the link will be in the description, but you know, they wouldn't make this. It's only for the preborn that they make these strange and perverted and twisted ethical contortions. Because, it, uh, for example, in the Roman Empire, when it was essentially legal for a Roman citizen to, to kill his... Uh, uh, wife and the lesser magistrate uh, would would do nothing under most circumstances if he determined that he could kill his wife. Well, it would not be wrong <laughs> just because the lesser magistrate and the society had accepted that form of uh, homicide as legitimate. It would not be wrong for me to uh, uh, exercise lethal force in her defense if that was the least amount of force that was necessary to stop uh, an innocent well, woman from being killed who did not deserve to be killed, okay? So, substitute any other person, if it was race-based, instead of age or development-based, if it was a, uh, you know, if Negroes, let's say, if black people could legally, even in, even in antebellum chattel slavery, there was no time or no state wherein it was legal just to kill a black person, but let's say that it was, okay? If you could legally just, just kill a black person because you're a white person, uh, I would not say all the things that T. Russell Hunter at abolishhumanabortion.com or .org uh, says, I would not say that the less, because of the lesser magistrate, or, or what these um, uh, northern Idaho abolitionist radio people say, that uh, because the lesser magistrate is the one authorized to use the sword, we may not, it is therefore evil for us to usurp the sword, and, and then we, you know, turn around and condemn the few brave um, men and women who have actually attacked these clinics and defended people. Now, do I advocate it? No, I do not. I do not do that. I do not attack abortion doctors. I do not attack abortion clinics. I do not advocate that which I, I do not have the courage to do. And I don't think anyone should do it right now because I don't want to see anyone sacrifice themselves. But that is different, very, in a world and a universe different from presenting to the world an ethical perversion where we, uh, act like somehow the lesser magistrate or any magistrate or even an emperor or Caesar himself or the all the way down to the governor or the dog catcher, okay? Nobody has the right to remove from another human being their inalienable right to self-defense, okay? And there's a reason why the abolitionists used 
The hymn, John Brown's Body, lies a moldering in the grave. His spirit marches on. They were striving for ethical consistency. Now, John Brown, who defended slaves with the edge of the sword, was much ethically more questionable than the people like Paul Hill, Scott Roeder, James Copp, Shelley Shannon, who have attacked the abortion clinics, okay? But the very fact of the, the so-called abolitionists and the so-called anti-abortionists uh, refusal to simply speak the words the preborn deserve the same defense as the born. I was on the phone recently with Joseph Foreman, a former uh, philosophical and, and um, pastor and philosophical leader of the uh, Operation Rescue movement, who wrote several uh, books and signed the uh, defensive action statement along with Pastor Matt Truella. And I uh, reiterated those words, which the people in Africa love it. I get, you know, we chant it in Africa. The preborn deserve the same defense as the born. They love it. Their minds have not yet been twisted to the point of AHA where they can't say those words. And I, when I was still fighting to get my, back my passport, I called Joseph Foreman from Kenya. And I, I mentioned that I uh, used that phrase, the preborn deserve the same defense as the born. And he said to me, this former uh, philosophical leader of Operation Rescue, who uh, had previously uh, signed the defensive action statement, which said that the actions of the uh, people who uh, used lethal force to defend uh, preborn babies uh, were justified. Okay, uh, he 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 has decade all these decades later. You know what he said back to me? He said, "I don't even know what that means." Now this could not be a simpler statement. <laughs> the preborn deserve the same defense as the born. Well, let me wrap this up by connecting this with Romans seven. I know what's happening here, and I've failed, and I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I repent for failing to communicate with you, Rusty Thomas, whose website, uh, Operation Save America, still has a press release to this day calling for the execution of Paul Hill, who bravely defended those children. Instead of lionizing him, instead of uh, singing hymns about him, instead of recognizing that his obedience demonstrates our own capitulation and falling on our knees and our own enslavement, Romans 7 style, to sin, to ongoing sin that we are mired in. Instead of doing that, you maintain on your website, as you work with Matt Truella, as you work with T. Russell Hunter, who says that it's evil to defend those children, you, the people who claim to be defending those children and leading people to defend them, actually maintain publicly that... Uh, Paul Hill deserved to be executed. It's a goddamned lie. And it has stripped you of the moral authority and of the power of the Holy Spirit of truth, who knows that it's a lie. And Troy Newman, who said that Scott Roeder was a coward, shame on all of you. Please repent. Please follow my leadership. I repent. We have failed. We are in a Romans 7 condition. Matt Truella, you say that Romans 7 is Paul reminiscing about the past. God damn it, it's a lie. We are in more than any other generation of Christians in history. A Romans 7 condition right now. And the only way out is to confess it. Romans 7 is present tense. And you fools, you are leading the young people. You are leading people off a cliff, on one side, into the cliff of pride, thinking, well, we've, we're have we the great abolitionists and we've accomplished something and now we've removed ourselves from any complicity. Well, you haven't. We are all together concluded in a Roman 7 condition. We are part of a beast, okay? You haven't separated yourself from the beast. No wonder you try to excise Romans 7 from the Bible from what it really means because it's describing our situation and your image of yourselves, which has been created by the flesh 
and by Hollywood, where the where the good guys always win and the bad guys always lose, and the, and you can't accept that we're the bad guys. Paradoxically, we would find if you would imitate me, okay, and repent and confess. I am a murderer. I am in a Romans 7 condition. Those things I would do, I don't do. But Matuella instead, you know, doesn't want to hear about it. He, if I, if someone, I'm not his friend on social media anymore, but if, if the last time I was, if I comment that the preborn deserve the same defense as the born, Matuella will delete the comment. As though there's some plot forward that you can, uh, some course that you can chart to victory in this that doesn't involve coming right back to that point where we confess our collaboration and confess that Paul Hill was courageous, that it is not evil that the lesser magistrate and no magistrate, higher or lesser, has any right to strip individuals of their right to self-defense. You have emasculated, you have emasculated your so-called abolition movement and can no more do anything to defend the preborn from that point forward than a eunuch can father a child, okay? Because you have blasphemed the truth. You have, you have impregnated your mouth with a lie and everyone sees it. Satan sees it and he knows you don't have the stuff to resist him. But paradoxically, if you will imitate me, I confess my failure. Confess your failure. Lead those who listen to you, Matt Truella. Lead those who listen to you, Rusty Thomas, to confess their failure. I am a murderer. Paul Hill was courageous. His body lies a moldering in the grave. But we confess our failure. The failure is ours. Okay? We're in a Romans 7 situation. That was the saving grace of Daniel. Before Romans 7 was ever written, Daniel understood in his confession in the book of Daniel not to uh, separate himself from the sin of his people, even though it occurred when he was, before he was born and when he was a, an innocent child carried away into Babylon. All right? He didn't separate himself from it. He confessed the Romans 7 situation that Daniel found himself and his people in. Well, I'm modeling that for you, and it begins for you, Rusty Thomas, with a public confession of that you held the coats of the murderers of Paul Hill, and that your website to this day calls for his execution. Shame on you. Let's repent together. I repent. Matt Turella, it begins with confessing that the very uh, Roman 7 that you uh, have stolen from everyone who listens to you through your false teaching about uh, the Bible and about God, where you say God doesn't know the future. You make God real small, <laughs> so God doesn't even know the future. God's small. But we people, we can never be uh, in a Romans 7 condition as, as born-again Christians. So we're real big. <laughs> we're too good for a Romans 7 condition. So people are, wow, people are people like you are great. <laughs> but God, God is small. God doesn't even know the future in an absolute sense, right? Well, repent. You're wrong. You're leading people on the one hand into pride, or if uh, not, on the other hand, into total despair. But Romans 7 is designed to guide us out of this because if we come to the point where we recognize our enslavement to perverted tolerance, not as a reminiscing in the here and the now, okay? And instead of trying to do contortions like the uh, T. Russell Hunter and his um, cap psychological captives, uh, the people who imitate his absurd uh, ethical uh, contorted rhetoric, okay, saying that it's an evil to defend. Instead, if we confess personally and corporately our failure to defend the preborn and our failure to speak the truth about these heroes like Scott Roeder and Paul Hill, who didn't love their life even to the ultimate sacrifice of being executed, being, being put in a cage their whole lives and demonstrate our love for them and demonstrate through public repentance and, and uh, Rusty Thomas issue a new press release repenting of the blood of Paul Hill. 
then we'll be getting somewhere. Until then, you're getting nowhere because you're in a Romans 7 slavery to sin condition and you'll never get out of it because you won't confess it because you think you're too good for it. That makes God's grace small, which can rescue us out of this. We can get out of it, okay? It's going to be difficult. It's going to be costly. It's going to be humiliating. But I'm with you. Follow my leadership out of it. I'm not telling you I have all the answers or you need, I don't want to be the leader of any of your organizations. I mean, in this one particular confession, I am a murderer. We have failed to defend our neighbor. And instead of casting a diabolical, lying, wicked, and perverse aspersions on those few handful of people who have loved their neighbor, we need to lionize, defend, beatify. Okay, they're just normal human beings. I'm using that with hyperbole, but we need to hold them up as examples. Not tell our, uh, anyone who listens to us to, to, to do what they did. We don't have to do that. But as we organize to defend those children, people will know that we are serious. They should see the repentance in our eyes and the knowledge of our capitulation and of our Romans 7 enslavement to sin, paradoxically, in confessing it, there's a way out and we'll get the power to break out of it. I hope you're hearing me. I repent. For God's sake, for Christ's sake, and for the sake of these children, who the Lord, knowing the future, has deliberately placed in our laps, on our watch. Let's repent.